punishments were truly horrible in this era as there was a lot of fear of the unknown. Categorically, there were three kinds of punishments, public humiliation, corporal punishments, and the death penalty. And in this list, we'll break down each one. Hi, my name is Jessa, please join me as we look together. Top 10 messed up dark age punishments not for the faint of heart. And in the last video I was in, top 10 disgusting punishments from the Victorian era I gave you guys a riddle. What loses its head in the morning and gets back at night? The answer is a pillow. Your next riddle will be at the end of this video. Anyways, let's get started. Number 10, stuck in the middle. The pillory consisted of hinged wood boards forming holes through which the head and or various limbs were inserted. And the boards were locked together to secure the captive. Pillories were set up to hold people in marketplaces, crossroads, and other public places. They're often held on platforms to increase public visibility of the person and often a plate card detailing the crime that was placed nearby. These punishments generally lasted only for a few hours, but by then you would want to contact your therapist by using BetterHelp or if you're lucky in a country with free healthcare. Contact your doctor for a psych eval. In being forced to bend over forward and stick your head through and your hands out in front of them, offenders in the pillory would have been extremely uncomfortable during their punishment. However, the main purpose in putting criminals in the pillory was to humiliate them in public. On discovery that the pillory was occupied, people would get excited as they would gather in the marketplace to taunt, tease, and laugh at the offender on display. Those who gathered to watch the punishment typically wanted to make the offender's experience a little bit more unpleasant as possible because why wouldn't they? As it was in their form of entertainment, if you were poor and didn't have a job, you might as well take some of the time of your day off and throw tomatoes at someone that can't fight back. Number nine, just to trim. Shaving one's head has actually been used as a form of punishment for centuries. From ancient times to modern day, it has been used to shame, humiliate, and punish individuals for various reasons. However, the effects of this punishment can be severe and long lasting. And in these times, they would also shave one's head before carrying them out to other punishments. For example, heretics, citizens who criticize their leaders, or in most cases, the king or emperor, etc., or even women who committed adultery, they would be forcibly gotten their head shaved, almost as a public display of showing of shame for their treason. The psychological impact of shaving one's head as a punishment can be traumatic, as it could lead to low self-esteem, depression, and anxiety. In some cases, it can even lead to post-traumatic stress disorder, aka PTSD. For some people, it might not seem like that scary as a punishment, but it is still a form of humiliation even used today. It's used as a punishment for minor offenses in some cultures, as well as punishment in schools and in prisons. Because of this, it leads to a culture of fear and oppression. Shaving heads without one's consent is a punishment and a violation of human rights and dignity, as it violates the rights of privacy and personal autonomy. Number eight, flogging. When it comes to another form of public punishment, some might be subjected into flogging or being whipped in public. Typically, flogging has been imposed as an unwilling subject as a punishment. However, it can also be submitted to willingly, uh, yeah, and even done by oneself in a sadomasochistic or religious context. Offenders could be subjected to beatings with implements like a whip or a rod, which were meant to be causing pain and severe as a deterrent. In the Dark Ages, the Whipping Act was passed in England in 1530 under this legislation, vagrants were taken to a nearby populated area and they would be tied by the end of a cart naked and beaten with whips throughout the town till the body should be very bloody. Although most of the whippings are typically done where the victim is wrapped around a pillar with their back exposed, there's also another thing called foot whipping where one's feet are exposed. In some countries, this punishment of foot whipping is still executed in public to this day. Number seven, marked. In forms of corporal punishment from temporary to more permanent involving the following on the list. Although in some cultures, tattooing isn't seen as a bad thing, but to other heritage is a source of pride, but in some cases, they're also used in means of marking an individual for their shame. Nathia Hawthorne, the scarlet letter famously marked its protagonist, Hester Prine, with a red letter A for adultery after accusations about her behavior. Hawthorne's book is more about fiction, as adulterers were really forced to mark their clothing to identify their crime. Like Hester Prine, A or the letters AD, as outlined by Plymouth Colony Law from 1658, adulterers were seen publicly without their letters were subjected to public whipping and even more humiliation and social alienation. The humiliation can be extended intentionally or not by leaving visible marks such as scars. This can be a main intention of the punishment as in this case of scarifications such as human branding. Number six, tis but a scratch. The medieval era's definition of period between the civilization of antiquity and the rational humanization of renaissance is strongly associated with uncontrolled emotional violence both within and outside the judicial systems in the place at the time. Mutilation by contrast involves the removal or irreparable disfigurement by any means of making small portions of one of those larger sections of a living or dead person. The latter would include castration, removing of one's private parts, evisceration, removing of internal organs, and flaying, which is removal of someone's skin. With a split nose or the brand of the city on your forehead, not only had you endured a painful experience, but everyone could see for the rest of your life that you had committed a crime. The reason this barbaric penalty was sought out was to avert heavier punishments like the death penalty, but even methods that do result in a death penalty do not avail lightly to those receiving the punishment. Number five, rotisserie. My bad, I had to think of a title for this one, but I know it's pretty grim. Impalement was used as a form of torment and execution in which a person is pierced with a long stake. This method would 
lead to a slow, painful death, and often the victim was hoisted into the air after partially impaled. Gravity and the victim's own struggles would cause him to slide down the pole, and death could take many days. Impalement was precise in the European times throughout the Middle Ages. Vlad III the Dracula, as we know, who learned this method by killing by impalement while staying in Constable, the capital of the Ottoman Empire, as a prisoner, and Ivan the Terrible have passed into legend as major users of this method. His method of torment was a horse attached to each of the victim's leg as a sharpened stake was gradually forced into the body. Death by impalement was slow and agonizing as victims sometimes endured for hours or even days. Vlad often had stakes arranged in various geometric patterns as well, so in some way he had a dream and a vision like an IKEA catalog magazine. So like here's my barbecue, my outdoor swimming pool, and my impaled prisoners in the shape of a star. Number 4 OG Lipo Pretty straightforward type of torment, although just as disgusting or disgutting. <laughs> Intestinal crank was a method of torment, or rather a capital punishment, involving making an incision in the abdominal area, separating the duodenum from the pylorus, and attaching of the upper part of the intestine to a crank. The crank would then be rotated to extract the intestines from the gastrointestinal cavities of the conscious person. The outcome was always death, but not immediate, so they would be watching their guts coming out. Number 3. Don't sleep. The heretic's fork was a torment device consisting of a long length metal with two opposing bipronged forks as well as an attached belt or strap. The device was placed between the breastbone and the throat just under the chin and secured with a leather strap around the neck. Although the victim was hung from the ceiling or otherwise suspended in a way so that they couldn't lie down, a person wearing it couldn't fall asleep. The moment that their head would drop with a little bit of fatigue, the prongs would pierce their throat or their chest, causing extreme great pain. This very simple instrument created long periods of sleep deprivation and people were awake for days which made confessions a bit more easier for those giving the punishment. Number 2, Lefestin. Unsure where this was originally originated, but it was actually used at least far back as 60 CE in the Roman Empire. Emperor Nero also used this method of torment as a tools of justice against his enemies, and if we know Nero, he was all sure a fan of torment. Those awaiting punishment were placed in loose pants that were tied tightly around the ankles, and rats were then poured into the pants where they were scratched and bit the prisoners' legs and groins while they were trying to escape the fabric. One of the most fiendish forms of rat torture emerged when the Dutch revolt in 60 16th and 17th century. The method involved trapping rats in a bottomless cage atop a victim's abdomen or their chest. Burning coals were then placed on top of this tray atop the cage, heating the metal from above, desperate to escape the heat. The rats would then begin to burrow the only way out, which is the person's stomach or their chest. With sharp claws and teeth, the rats will quickly gnaw their way into the victim's bowels, causing excruciating pain and terror. The technique was particularly came in handy when Dutch leaders were trying to extract information from their Spanish enemies. As soon as the cage rats were placed on a prisoner's abdomen, the terrified men would just give up and tell them everything before the coals were added on top. And finally, number one, cooked. Although it's noted that the most famous form of torment and method of getting rid of a witch was to burn her or put them in the stake, but this was more common in Europe during the early 1300s and then at the end of the 17th century. In the Middle Ages, burning was used as both a form of torment as well as a capital punishment. As a form of torment, the victim's feet would be held to a fire or trapped into metal boots that were heated up. Or they could be strapped into an iron chair that was lit on fire underneath or red hot irons that could be applied. Metal torments instruments were also often heated, pincers, pliers, and so on. Burning or molted liquids could also be used. The victim would also be forced to dip limbs in them or even have them poured down their throats as a form of capital punishment. Burning has always had a long history for crimes as treason for heresy, blasphemy, and witchcraft being regarded by the Christian churches as treason against God. Sodomy was also punished by burning alive, again, because it was seen as a crime against God. Anyways, that's it for the list, and your next riddle goes like this. What can run but never walk? Be sure to put your answer in the comments below, and I'll reveal the answer to the next video, Top 10 Unsettling Punishments, again, from Ancient Greece. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jessica. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see your beautiful faces in the next one. Bye.